following another creator on YouTube and the channel is called The 120 East and it's all about medium format cameras. The guy called Nick, based in England, got some great content on there, some absolutely stunning content and I'm, and I'm loving it. Got chatting with him, bless his cotton socks, he had a spare Lubitel 2. Beautiful, beautiful little camera. He sent it all the way from the UK to me down here in little old New Zealand and I'm absolutely blown away by his generosity. Cannot wait to put this bad boy, bad girl, bad boy, bad gender undecided. I can't wait to put this camera through its paces. Beautiful. Nick, you're a scholar and a gentleman. Cheers, buddy. I hope I do your generosity and your faith a little bit of justice. Cheers, mate. I really do appreciate it. This is the Lubitel 2. Now, Lubitel, I'm led to believe, is Russian for amateur. These TLRs, or twin lens reflex cameras, were manufactured in the Soviet Union between 1955 and 1980. They're quite a simple design. Here's a quick overview of what the camera consists of. Now, being a twin lens reflex, you've got two lenses. The top lens is the viewing lens. The bottom lens is the actual taking lens. The taking lens is 75 millimeters, F4.5, right up to F22. And she's pretty beautiful, actually. This little lever here, that is to cock the shutter. So you bring this down like that. Now the camera is cocked, ready to fire. The next lever down, that is your actual shutter release. There you go. This port here is for your cable release. And today I'm gonna be using the cable release. Cock the shutter, the shutter's cocked, and then the cable release fires the shutter. Beautiful. And I'm doing that because I'm going to sit the camera on a tripod, which there's your tripod mount. The next lever cross aperture setting. Today I'm going to be shooting everything I shoot is going to be at f11. That's my preferred setting, aperture setting. The next lever is this one here. That controls your shutter speed. So you can go from bulb mode, 15th of a second, right up to 250th of a second. You've got a self timer here. So if you want to do a selfie, you Drag that lever all the way down, cock your shutter, fire it, and it will give you a 10 second countdown. Do, 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 do. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, fire. Beautiful. On this top viewing lens, you've got a focusing scale. I've been looking through the viewfinder and I can't actually see any difference in the focusing. So whether or not it's working correctly, I don't know. For the purposes of this video, this experiment, I'm going to set the camera into infinity. So technically, everything I shoot should be in decent focus. That is your viewing screen. It's quite bright in there. It's not too bad at all. Uh, you've got a little magnifier, which you pop up there just to fine tune your focusing. This knob here, this advances your film. We've got a little window here. You've got a blank there. That window is now closed to save any light leaks. But when you're advancing the film, you open that. You advance the film and the number, frame number, will pop up in the frame. This is a 6x6 medium format camera which takes 120 roll film. That will give me 12 frames on a roll of 120. Uh, that, guys, is as simple as it gets. Now, I'm saying simple. Until I use it, I don't know how simple it's going to be. Obviously, because there's no metering, there's no metering, no battery, no nothing in there, I'm going to have to use a handheld meter. So, uh, to record the light, that's all good. We're going to shoot it with a roll of Kodak Ektar 100 120 roll film, which I absolutely adore. Uh, sit it on a tripod. I just love how manual everything is. I mean, absolutely everything is manual. Uh, there's no batteries, no inner metering, nothing. What you've got is what you've got. And again, this is another camera where you're going to have to rely on your own initiative, your own technical ability, your own gut instinct. Make a photograph with a box. And I cannot wait to put some film into it and get out there and shoot something. Loading the film looks quite easy. What you do is to access the film loading cartridge, you pop open these two springs at the top, which are quite, quite tight, obviously, to keep the light out. The back drops open. There's your take-up spool. You place your new roll of film in there. Let's try it in real life because what possibly can go wrong? First things first, we'll just open the roll of Kodak Ektar 100. Get away, get away. I'm fast running out of fingernails to open this stuff, to be honest. 
That'll do. That'll do. Okay, the take up spool is in place and it's turning quite freely. So next we're going to place we're going to place the leader into one of these slots on the take up spool like so. Wind it on quite nicely just so you've got a, a little bit of a take up there. Then we're going to unfurl the paper, unfurl the roll down to this section here and we're going to place that it's quite hard to show you this guys there are other videos online which make a much better effort of showing you how to roll this phone uh, far better than what I'm doing actually it's quite it's, it's a little bit tricky in that there's a I think we've got it. I think we're, we're in, we're in, we're in. Okay, cool. Beautiful. So now we've done that, we just wind on, keeping this paper as tight as possible. All right, and everything seems to be running quite freely. So just keep winding on, nice and gently, until we get an arrow coming through, which is there. You see that arrow there? I think now it's quite safe to close the back. So we'll shut that, click that there. That is now technically light tight although I have read these cameras are notorious for light leaks so we're gonna put the film in we're gonna keep it as dark as possible when not in use uh, slip it in a dark bag and away we go now just to advance the film you open this little flap now you'll see I don't know if you can actually see but you should see a series of dots coming up in that window and if you can see them you're better than me because I can't see anything coming through whatsoever Oh, here we go, here we go. Um, right, so we've got an arrow coming through into the window there. I'm not sure if you can actually see that in this light. But we have got an arrow there, which means we are still advancing, so keep going. I seem to have been winding this quite a long time. But that's okay. We know we're on the right tracks. So hopefully we'll see something else coming through shortly. Here we go, a series of dots coming up. Oh, actually, <laughs> I've just wound past frame number one. So uh, we're now onto frame number two. So that's not very clear, actually. But that definitely says frame number two. So we're going to close that. I have already lost one frame. So out of, a, out of a roll of 12 shots, we have now got 11. One down, 11 to go. What a muppet. Because like a mug, I did an introduction down at the beach, let you know where I am. And I talked you through the first shot. Unfortunately, I hadn't turned on the, uh, the microphone, so there you go. Great start to the shift. So I'm down at a local beach, Faranaki Beach, Hawke's Bay, New Zealand. Plenty of driftwood, plenty of coastal flowers. S River mouth down yonder, where I've just been. Black sand, what more can you ask for? So the first shot, I found an old, gnarly, iron garden table. The sun, at that point, was beating down and the rusty iron stood out quite nicely with Napier Hill on the horizon. I struggled a little bit with the focus and I struggled a little bit with the overall composition. It's quite uh, quite difficult to look through that screen and compose a shot. I'm hopeful that I got away with it. Settings for that shot, ISO 100, F11, 1, 1 of a second. I think it's going to come out quite nice. Okay. This will be my second shot. Now I'm out in the field or out on the beach. I've worked out how to operate this focusing screen and it is actually pretty bloody good. You can really fine tune the focusing, which is great. So I'll just cock the shutter. Beautiful. All right, guys, let's move on. And as you can see, the surf is absolutely pumping today. This is the Esk River mouth. Okay, next shot, F11, 160th. Is it coming through? It's trying. A little bit, a little bit on the crest. We'll just wait, see if we can get a bit more. There we go, a little bit of surf on the black sand. Is that enough for me? Uh, why not? No, no, we're going to wait until we get a little bit more, actually. Here we come, this one's coming over the, over the top. This one's looking pretty cool. Got a bit further, that looks pretty cool. I think we'll shoot it. And I think that's uh, I think
think that's okay. How are the shots I've taken so far? I'm quite confident, but not with that one. Don't know why. That one didn't seem too confident on the shutter. I'm just going to reshoot that one. Well, okay, okay. I don't know. Let's find something else. So this is the Esk River mouth. And it's looking pretty cool. In fact, that's looking like my next shot. I like that. If this shot works out, I'll be happy. This will be my uh, shot of the day, I reckon. Looks beautiful out there. Some nice leading lines, nice ocean pumping in the background. If I had any other camera, I think I'd be really confident with this. As this camera is incredibly new to me, I'm just a little bit unsure about my operation of it. Hopefully it works okay. Very difficult to see in there. You have to be quite a way away from the, uh, from the viewing screen to make sense of what you're looking at. I think that's got it. I think we're okay. I think we're good to go. That is effectively, hopefully, what this shot is going to be like. Just take a light reading. F11, 30th of a second. Just going to put the cable release in again. I don't know why I keep taking it out. Cock the shutter. Wait till we get some decent surf coming up there. Here we go, here we go, here we go. I think we're going to get a good bit of surf pumping up here. Oh yeah, she's there, she's there, she's all over the sand. Wow, that's looking gorgeous. That looks absolutely amazing. Amaze balls, loving it. Here we go, shot. Beautiful. That is a nice shot, that really is a nice shot. Okay, before I forget, too easy to do a double exposure on this camera. So, we're just gonna fast forward it to number seven. All right ready to shoot again the way you focus this camera the top viewing lens is geared into the bottom taking lens you turn the top ring it turns the bottom ring to get you a perfect focus i'm quite enjoying this little camera she's a beauty cheers nick i'm going to call it a draw here guys the weather's turning sour we've got some rain coming in to be honest i, I really just don't want to waste film for the sake of wasting film just for the video my channel's all about the photography more than the gear really i like to use different gear but I like to make nice photographs. I've got five frames left on this roll of film. Tomorrow the forecast looking a damn sight better than today. So we're gonna try again tomorrow. Welcome to the next day. It's been glorious, but I've had other things on with the family. I've not had a chance to get out with a camera, unfortunately, until now. I've got a bit of free time, so I'm just having a bit of a drive around, see if I can pick off a few shots. Unfortunately, as the day's gone on, the clouds increased a little bit, which has kind of scuppered any decent last light. Anyway, driving down the road just now, dropped on this uh, this clump of trees in the foreground, the moon, the long sort of rural road, and I've just pulled up. It was in quite good light. Didn't have a chance to video it. Just jumped out of the van, bang, straight into the shot. 30th of a second, F11, ISO 100. And it made quite a nice frame, actually. Quite impressed. And what I'm thinking, I'm gonna get back in the van, just drive a bit further along the road, find a nice sort of area, and wait until we get sunset. Because I'm thinking, if we don't get any more light coming through the clouds, we're gonna get some nice color in the sky. So far, so good, it's going well, it's going well. And, 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 when I was taking shots yesterday at the beach, and I said that the shutter wasn't feeling too confident, and it was, it, it, that's primarily because it was so quiet. It's a leaf shutter. It's not a big mirror, clunky mirror giving it some. It's a leaf shutter. Meant to be quiet. Yeah, I'm, I'm more confident now that the shots are going to come out. Let's move on. Just dropped on this stand of trees alongside the road here. Although the sky's crap behind it at the moment. As the sun drops down, hopefully, that starts to red up, get some nice colour in it. If it does, we'll have it. Maybe have a comparison shot. Bad light, hopefully good light. So I'm not entirely sure what I've done wrong. I'm sure it said in the frame counter, Number nine, which means nine, 10, 11, 12, three shots remaining. So I've just taken another shot of the tree. That's my second shot of the trees. And I've just wound on, the next number was 12. I've got to keep my powder dry now, because if that's the last frame, because it says it's the last frame, 12. Don't know what the hell I've done. I've got no idea whatsoever how many shots I'm going to get out of this roll of film. Could be, uh, could be jack all, to be fair. As I was shooting that last shot, I was just thinking to myself, I feel a lot better today shooting it because this is this is technically the second outing with the camera and i'm thinking shit i'm getting used to this i'm, I'm quite enjoying this and then it uh, throws me a bit of a curveball whereby uh, 
I think I'm shooting frame nine. It wants to shoot frame 12. Are we gonna get anything out of this? Really, really no idea. I've got a weird feeling that I've shot these trees before. And I pulled up at these trees completely unaware that these were the trees I'd shot before. It's just that they look good, they stood out. I couldn't be bothered to chase around looking for anything else, to be honest. Check out the video, guys, some nice light. We are just starting to get some colour in those beautiful clouds. Now, below those clouds, you obviously can't see them. That's the Ruahini mountain range. And they spit out some absolutely spectacular cloud formations from time to time. I've dug out the old faithful Fuji X100F because I want to make sure if that sky does kick off I want to make sure I've got an acceptable shot and that guys is potentially my lot I really don't think there's going to be anything else coming out of that yep backing paper coming through really don't know what went wrong there what I've got out of it I have got no idea whatsoever like I say, I thought I had another, another two or three shots left on the roll. Apparently not. <laughs> what can I say? I've never been good at maths. I managed to get a couple of shots in with the Fuji and they look really cool. I wouldn't have a Scooby what I've got on the back of the bloody uh, Lubitel. Time will tell. Lubitel, time will tell. Wait. So now all that remains is to take the film out of the camera. First thing I want to do is advance the film a few more times just to make sure that it is actually fully wound onto the take-up spool, which it feels okay. We're gonna crack open the film bay. So these two springs here, one, two springs there, and that should open. And there is one beautifully wound on roll of Kodak Ektar. Now to remove the film, you pull this winding knob open. There's a little tab there. I don't know if you can see that little tab there. You pull that forward like that, and it just comes out beautifully look at look at that bad boy look at that whoa give it a bit of uh, the old saliva test wrap it round there and all that remains is to close up the camera back which you do by sliding back that little tray there you see that little tray now what I'm going to do while I'm at it I'm going to remove the used spool and place it in the take-up cartridge then it's ready for the next roll so you just lift the tray up again Slot the empty spool in there, and away you go. No easier than that. And I'm just gonna turn it a few times just to make sure we have got a properly seated spool. All that remains is to send this film away, get it processed. Hopefully the results will be here pretty soon, and hopefully they'll look something like. <laughs> 